Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm here with a bit of a techniques video today. Right, every time you guys see my ephemera box or I do a journal where I use this sort of ephemera, I get lots of questions as to how do I create these backgrounds. Well, I've been creating these backgrounds for some time now, and I was initially inspired by... Um, a video I saw Shinuki Art do, which is where I saw her do it, and then I took it on board and I've been using it ever since. I will put a link in this corner to Shinuki Art's um, YouTube channel. Very talented lady, does some wonderful mixed media projects, both big and small. Pop across, show us some love, have a look at it. So anyway, so I have lots of questions, probably from more from newbies. Um, than those with experience within paper crafting of how I do them. But as you can see, I use them and it this one is probably file folder, I would say. So anyway, so that's what we're gonna to address today. And I'm gonna share with you how I do it. Now, different people do it in different ways, um, but we're gonna show you how I've been doing it. Now, I'm going to do this as a little bit of an experiment as well. So I'm gonna do it on, this is just a piece of file folder, which is kind of what I normally use. This is watercolour paper that's hot press, um, so it's smooth. And this is mixed media paper, just from a mixed media pad. I don't know a weight or anything, it's just, I don't have the cover of it anymore, so it's a mixed media paper. So I thought, let's have a look and see how each of them reacts. Now to do this, I am using Distress Oxides. Um, my vintage photo is coming coming to an end. I have a brand new one over there, but this one's coming to an end, so I would normally use this anyway. Um, so I've got Distress Oxide, vintage photo, peeled paint, aged mahogany, uh, Vilna's potion, blueprint sketch, ice spruce, fossilized amber, fire brick, spiced marmalade, faded jeans, and I've got a mini here, which is festive berries. Now, um, I don't have a huge amount of inks, as you can see, and some of them have been gifted to me in Happy Mail, and some of them I've gifted myself when, when I've had a little bit of extra money and I've treated myself at a craft show. I believe this would work with any water-based ink pads, okay? I usually only use the Distress Inks or the Distress Oxides, and I do know there are splatter techniques you can do with water to pull the colour back off. I don't always do that, but I mean, I would say pop across to Tim Holtz and look at Tim Holtz's Distress Ink tutorials. He does a fabulous job. So what else are you going to need? Um, I'm using a couple of spritz bottles. This is just pure water. Now, not I say pure water. It's water from the tap. It's not purified. It's water from the tap. I'm also using my big ceramic tile that you've seen me use before. Normally when I do this without the camera, I do it on my glass mat. But as we all know, glass mats cause reflection, so we're not going there with that. Now, you can do this technique on uh, coffee dyed paper, but a word of warning, there's a lot of water involved in this. Coffee dyed paper doesn't tend to hold up very well if you keep getting more and more saturated. If I was doing coffee dyed paper, I would do a couple of inks and then I would dry the paper back to completely dry. Then a couple of big, if you could be adding and adding, it's going to break down and the fibre's going to tear. So I think without further ado, let's get on with this, shall we? So my first thing is, I'm just going to get some water, take the cap of it. Now I'm using um, one of these as like a travel one instead of this. This tends to pump out too much water. These are more of a misting spray, so that's why I use these. So first thing I'm going to do, I hope you can see this. Is it far enough in? It probably is now. So I'm just going to take my ink pad and I'm just going to dab it onto my surface. As I said, I use a ceramic tile. I use it for painting. I use it as my palette. It was in, in the discontinued aisle in my hardware store. So I grabbed it. I'm just going to activate the water-based colours with my spray. And I'm going to come in and I'm not... I don't care about where it goes on here. And I think that's the secret to this. Just do it. So already we're creating something lovely and grungy. And I'm going to do that to each of these. Actually, I should have spritzed. Oh, I'm doing the wrong side. I don't want the bits of my writing on to. I'm going to spritz my surface as well, just to let it spread a little further. Now, I have had comments in the past of doesn't water dilute the ink pad? I've never found it to be a problem. 
Um, if you are worried about that, uh, maybe take it off with an, with an ink dabber or something and then put it down. I suppose you could use re-inkers for this instead of using an ink pad. It's just what I've always done, guys. So again, different look again. It is quite a quick technique. Now, I'm going to leave these as backgrounds when they're done. I'm not going to cut them up because if I leave them as backgrounds, that means in the future, if I have a project I want to use them on, I can cut them up then. Because I've got enough tag bases in this design or this style. I've got enough um, journal cards and pockets already made. I don't particularly need to create more. I'm only doing this video because I think it's helpful. So, right. So that's pretty much covered. I do try to look at corners because I tend to miss corners and edges. So, so there's a bit of this on there. Let's just use it up and get it on there. So I'll pull this one back in. Now I do find that the mixed media papers and the watercolour papers dry a lot quicker um, and become rigid again than the file folder. The file folder is soft so be aware file folder is in danger of tearing or breaking down if you get it too saturated. Um, I also like the fact that I can layer up um, the splatters because as you see this is now almost dry and if I come in with another load it gives me another value of the colour on there. I'll just try to get into those corners to tidy them up. Now we will take a closer look when they're all done. Um, I'm flashing through this video because um, I'm doing the same technique time and time again. I, I don't really want to spend too much time on the video with you getting bored, going, well, we've seen that a hundred times now. Yes, but what I like is every time I pick it up, it reveals something different. So I'm going to be doing the whole thing, yeah, in real time, I would say. So, right, so I'm at this point. This is the, what is this one? This is the mixed media one. This is the hot press, was it hot press? It was hot press, watercolour. And this one here is the file folder. A little bit of a clean up. Now I do tend to wipe my ceramic tile off in between, um, just to clean it up. I'm gonna use, this is my clean up cloth here. I'm just gonna use a cloth. I could have had a piece of scrap paper or something and clean that up, but that would be another process you'd be watching. So I'm gonna put my Distress Ink Vintage Photo by. I'm then gonna come in and I think I'm gonna use Firebrick. You can use whatever colors you want. Um, I would say if you're not used to using or owning these, buy the minis, because these come in sets of, I think they're either sets of three or four in the minis. Um, and they do an equally as good job. So. I mean, it's just on a smaller basis, but if you're one of these people who doesn't use a lot of inks, um, buying the Distress inks, if you're not in America, can be quite expensive. Um, I tend to buy my um, Tim Holtz products from a shop here in the UK called Art From The Heart. Um, I'll try and put a link to that in my description box as well, just in case you're in the UK. Other than that, it would be wherever you buy your art supplies from Ranger. I'm almost certain places like in America, Hobby Lobby and um, possibly Joann's or Michael's would do them. I think a lot of us are actually shopping a lot online lately because ever since the pandemic, everyone started shopping online and we seem to have kept that habit up. Bit of a pity really because I like to mooch my way around a craft store to see what they've got. So as you can see, getting some interesting stuff here. I don't mind if this puckering thing happens when I pull it up, it adds another layer of something. Now I'm not going to be going overboard with every single link because I'm going to try and build up the layers as we go along. Right, so I've got some red, got that. Let's come in. Let's come in with faded jeans. Get some blue into the background. You will note I didn't clean my plate this time. And that's because I know that if I have um, two colours are brightly coloured, 
on the on the ceramic tile at the same time they are likely to mix and mingle and create different colors giving me more of how would I call it an aged look All right so this is the file folder which I can really feel is getting quite soft at the moment but never mind it will dry out I know it will go back to its original rigidity is that a word maybe it is a word it's a word now because I've just invented it there you go I think rigidity is a word though you know me I'm, I'm British but I can't speak English very well and that's scary right I need a bit more of this on the go oops and I don't need to drop it um what else could you do I should imagine you could do something similar with this if you were to mix up acrylic paints um, make them a really um, watery consistency and you could do something similar to this in that you might be able to do it with watercolour paints as well. Okay, see, getting that really oldie worldy look here. Um, I, as I haven't tried this with um, watercolours or um, acrylics, I don't know. You could definitely do this with inks. I mean, you could put inks on here spread it out with a paintbrush, maybe spritz it and then pick it up. All right, we were nice and grungy here, loving that. I'm loving that too, so bear with me. I need to get a spare bit of paper because I can't be wasting that, that was too good. So I've just got a bit of, I think that's either tea or coffee dyed paper here and I'm just gonna pick this up. Hopefully the paper won't fall to pieces on me. So if I just, cause I'm using it after I've sat soaked up the majority of the water, so. Hopefully the paper will hold up. That seems such a pity to waste that. So yeah, see it just gives me some grunge. So that will become my cleanup. And I'm going to clean this up now because I don't want the colours that follow to become really muddy. So right, so we've got, got this on the go. This I feel is a mixed media. This one's file folder. And this one's the hot press watercolour. Right, I'm liking the colours on there more. The watercolour, for some reason, I don't seem to have some, enough brightness on it. So let's put those at the top. I'm going to come in now and I'm going to use fossilised amber on this one, a yellow one. I like this one. It's got a really good punch of colour to it. Hopefully I'm not rocking you. Really nice punch of colour to it and it will really liven, liven the situation up a bit. Now, I'm tending to focus a little bit on the edges at this point for no other reason then I know that I tend to focus normally on the middles. So that's the first one. Now, it is all about layers when you do this technique. Okay, guys, that it is it's all about building up the depth of perception within the piece with the use of layers of color. Now, I must have had wet, wet blue on my, oh, I've sprayed it, have I? wet blue on my paper which then turned that green happy accidents not a problem gives it actually quite an olive look to it let's pick up some of that in the corners now you could do this and make a cover out of this although what i would say is because they're water reactive inks if you're going to use this as a cover and you're going to seal the cover you may have difficulty brushing on things like a matte medium or Mod Podge purely because that liquid is going to reactivate the inks and move it all around. I personally would probably, um, if you're someone with a gel plate, I would probably put Mod Podge or matte medium on my gel plate and then do press that down, pick it up, and then that would have given it a bit of a seal. I don't know. I've got a feeling I have seen a spray mod podge, some mod podge somewhere, but I'm sure I've seen a may, uh, a spray version. So you could always spray it to seal it, I suppose. Not something I've done. Um, I don't tend to use these four covers. So, so I'm just is it hypothesizing? Kerry's got big words today. Right. So let's have a look. So we're getting there now. I could stop at any stage. I'd rather this one didn't have those lighter patches and I want to come in and bring that in. Now, I could come back in with the original um, vintage photo if I so chose, but we're going to keep adding colours. Now, 
looking at this, I don't want to put any more blue, so I'm going to take the, the blueprint sketch out of the equation because I don't want that. I do quite like the, the purple that I have, so I'm going to enhance them with Villainous Potion. This is, okay, that'll tell you, this is the last one I bought, and I hadn't bought one of these for about six months before that, so you can see I don't tend to buy these too often. But they are really lovely. I mean, you get some great effects with them. I tend to use archival inks a lot, and I use archival purely because my other techniques are usually things like painting over the top of things or things with water in them. And if I use these inks, of course, they just continue to move. Now, um, something else about these inks. When they dry, they dry paler. So at the moment we're going, good grief, Kerry, that's really dark. It's fine. It's going to dry paler. It's the nature of the ink. Um, let's see if I can get some of this one because I've got quite a few white bits here. And I like the, the muddiness of this colour on this ceramic tile at the moment. That could add to the backgrounds. So, so hopefully give this a go and do go across and see Shinuki. Shinuki does lovely things. One thing I'm always fascinated is um, she does altered playing cards that I've seen her do a fair few times and they always fascinate me because we all know what a playing card looks like and yet she turns them in these incredible little works of art, all mixed media obviously, um, but they're absolutely lovely when she's done them and I, it's on my list. It's on my list to have a go, let's put it that way. Um, well, there's lots of things on my to-do list as far as having a go and filming and sharing techniques. So, but there you go. Right, loving that. I think that one's going to be done with purple. Going to use my um, coffee or tea dyed paper just to pull off some of this. Now, you'll notice I'm swiping with it, but I'm supporting the paper with my hand. So I'm not putting extra stress on it. Because, um, as I said, it could easily tear when it gets wet. That's okay, really grungy. Right. So I'm going to just wipe this off. And then we'll take a look at each of them and see if there's anything else I think I want to add. I'm not sure there is, but I'm not sure. Okay, I quite like that. I like that as it is, to be honest. But I do have a feeling I want to get rid of the manila part of this. This I'm liking, but I'd like a little more drama in here. This is way loads of drama. Which one is this? This is the watercolour paper. And that's quite a surprise, actually, because I thought it would have absorbed and bled a lot more. But I quite like that. I like this slash down here. Now, if you're making these, you could always photocopy them or photograph them and print them and make them into... Um, signature pages in your journals if you so chose. I probably wouldn't put something of this weight as a journal page personally. I usually have like this sort of weight for journal pages. So again, I'd, I'd, avoid, I'd avoid that weight. It will just bulk it up. I think I'm going to come in with spiced marmalade. I want to pull back... Oh, what am I doing? I want to pull back that... Um, almost vintage photo feel to this. Now I could go back in with vintage photo obviously but I think I want, I want the vibrancy of this um, spice marmalade. I like orange. It is one colour I do use. Just giving me bits. I think I want that a little wetter. It's not. I want this area here picked up and it's just not doing it. I'm being quite cautious at the moment about how I pick these up. It may seem that I'm throwing these around, but I'm trying to be a little more cautious because obviously these are really saturated. When you're doing it yourself, if you do find that they're getting too wet, either go and make yourself a cup of coffee and let them dry out, or hit them with a heat gun or a hairdryer. Okay, I'm liking that. I've got stuff on there. Do I want that on there? I do, actually. Yeah, just be respectful of the substrate you're putting things onto. Because sometimes you can push the boundaries of the 
the internal structure so much that it just well obviously just falls to pieces right that's that's looking like it needs a punch of something the other two are fine this one is not uh, that one is not this one I'm just going to do a bit of a clean up because so I don't think that needs a lot right again using this paper now I can feel this coffee dyed paper is getting a little bit wet so I have to be careful I don't actually tear it and if I tear it it's probably going to be where I've got my finger and thumb because that's what the stress point is but as you can see I'm getting a really grungy look on there that I'm not sure whether that will become a background for something or it might get put into a mixed media piece I'm not sure but I'm not wasting the ink right this one I want to say is ready for the next stage so I'm going to put this to one side to dry just for a few seconds while I work on the others now this actually you might yes let's work on one at a time this one I really liked this but I'm looking for something and I think I'm going to put aged mahogany in here because it's got that warmth behind it and I think aged mahogany well it's just a lovely color so yeah, but buying the inks from Tim Holtz could easily become an obsession for me. So I tend to rein myself in and not buy too many because they'll sit in my drawer and I'll use them once in a while. And I would rather take that financial resource and put it into something else that I use all the time. So as I said, your best bet if you don't have these inks already is either try things like watercolour or watered down acrylics or um, other water based pigment inks. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Water based inks. Pigment, I think, is the one you'll be looking for. Right. Liking that. Now, actually, a little bit there just needs a little something. There you go. I'm going to leave this one to dry off a bit as well. Now this one I'm not overly upset but I'm wondering whether I just need to have a clean up right this is the file folder one and as you can see it's really really getting soft on me I think we're going to call it a day on that one right, just a little bit of a clean up with this this here and then we'll work on the next stage so you could do these on a larger scale, a smaller scale. I will very often do these on index cards. I mean, a lot of those journal cards you saw me use were index cards. And index cards that I buy usually have writing lines on one side and plain lines on the other, uh, and plain paper on the other side. Now, they are not meant to be getting those wet. However, I do tend to, as I said, let them dry if they're getting a little soggy and then continue on with the process afterwards. But index cards are perfect. They're inexpensive. I mean, they're meant for students and you can buy them in a bundle of like 200 for very little money. Sometimes you find them in your thrift or your charity or your recycling stores. Just pick them up. They're useful for anything. You can even just stick, stick other paper to them. They're a good base for that. Okay, so let's have a look at each of these. So this one, loving this one. Well, I'm liking more, to be honest with you. Um, that was the file folder. This one was the hot press watercolor. I don't mind leaving the paler patches in this. And then this one, which is still drying a bit. I think we're gonna call it done with adding inks. There is another stage that I do, however, Let's just pull that to one side. I'm going to move my plate over a bit. This is my messy mat, as you can probably tell. So I'm just going to put these on here. Just actually going to need to do them in pairs, aren't I? So you can see them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some splatters on here. Now you could use um, white ink. There are white inks. I wonder whether I can find my white ink. No, can't see my white ink. Never mind. I wasn't intending to use it on this anyway. So what I'm going to do is, because these are water-based inks and react to water, I'm actually going to use um, acrylic paint now to finish these off. I'm using a fan brush. You could use any other brush you choose. I'm just using a fan brush because it's easier for what I want to do. I'm going to come in and I've got some white acrylic paint. 
Don't need a huge amount, I've probably got far too much out there, but then that's my norm. And I want this quite um, loose, let's call it loose. Um, can you see this? Let's see if I can move it in. So I'm just getting it so that it is quite liquid. I need a bit more water than that, to be honest. Because I'm going to do some splatters, and I like to do my splatters with acrylic paint, because when the acrylic paint is dried, it's not going to move. So I've got, this is quite a loaded brush actually, so if I tap, tap it on my finger, you could tap it onto another paintbrush if you wish. That will just give me splatters. Now, I will give you a word of warning here. My curtains, which are directly ahead of me, have a wonderful array of splatters on them at the moment, because every time I do this, I get overly vigorous, and, and I end up with splatters or whatever I'm doing on on that surface. So just be aware, either do this outside or put maybe, I know that Tim Holsters have something called a splat box. Don't be buying a splat box, just get a big box and cut one side off it. There's no need to be paying for a product that the product will arrive in a box that you could probably utilize for that anyway. Right, so I've got my white splatters on here. I like using a combination of white splatters and black splatters uh, purely because one sets up the contrast for the other one. Right, I'm just going to have a bit of a clean up here with my uh, paper, the, um, the coffee or tea dyed paper. Just picking up this, just making myself a bit of a muddy background by the looks of it. I also need to clean off this brush so that it's not all white because I'm about to do black and I can't do black if I've got white on there because you end up with grey. Right, that's that's going to go to one side now because it just is getting in my way. Need to clean this up. Where's that rag? And I've got myself, where's that pot of water gone? Got just a pot of water now. Um, when I'm working on my craft table, art studio, wherever I am. Um, I don't have running water in this room. So what I tend to do is I tend to bring um, water in. I found, because I can be a bit of a klutz, that I tend to put it in things like this, which have got a lid on them, because if I don't, you know what's happened? I've knocked over an entire pot of water before now. Um, and it's easily done because you're reaching back and forth. So I would say, find yourself a container with a lid. It doesn't have to be big, could be a jam jar. I found a plastic one. This had, I think this had tea bags in it or something, like those cold infusion tea bags, only because if it was glass, it could pretty much shatter, and then I'm dealing with glass. Um, however, because it's plastic, it'll bounce. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? It's going to split. Um, but I'm going to have to have dropped it considerably high to get it to split. Right, I'm going to come in with black now. And I'm going to do the same process. I'm using Mars Black. Now, I'm using a heavy body, body paint here. You could use a thinner consistency. You can use whatever colour you want. Like, I could come in, say, on this one and put purple splatters in it. I could put red splatters. Whatever you wish. I'm just making these... Oh, a little bit grungy because that's what I like. I don't like that stuck to my paint though. That's a bit of a goober on top of there, isn't it? So I'm using Mars Black, as I said, I'm using a heavy bodied for no other reason than I'm using a heavy bodied. Again, I'm mixing this down. Let's pick this up. I'm mixing it down to a splattery consistency. So basically, um, Let's see, what could be something that you would think? Probably just past um, pourable honey or something. It's just, it just needs to be soft enough to come off the, off the brush when you tap it, but not that wet that it just doesn't, doesn't have an intensity of colour. Again, just coming in, tapping. Oh, I've got on my t-shirt as well. Well, this is, this is my painted, oh, I've got on my arm as well. How hard am I tapping? So, and yes, I've got more on the curtains. I can see it from here. Right, so move that one out of the way. Oh, actually, I want a bit by there. I'm not sure whether you can see that, but 
as I said, we'll take a look at all of these once they're fully dried, because what I'm going to do after I've done this, this particular one, is let's move that one out of the way, is I'm going to put you on pause for two seconds, and I'm going to clean up the deck so I don't have a whole ton of stuff hanging around, getting in the way, and we can actually look at them close up then. And also they will have dried fully by then. Oh, okay, we've got a feature there, people. That's on, I've done it again. That's what happens when you miss your finger. It'll be a feature in the future. <laughs> there you go. Right, I need a couple of seconds just to clear these decks, just to get all of the stuff put by, let these fully dry, and then we'll take a look at them so you can get more of a realistic view of what they look like when they're dry. So bear with me, guys. I'll be back in two. So here I am back again, even my hands are a bit cleaner by now. Now, before we take a look at them, and, and I can tell you some good bads about the things you've seen, I did mention index cards. Now, this is what I mean by an index card. These aren't plain on one side and ruled on the other because I can't find them at the moment. But there's always, I mean, if I can bend this, uh, there's this kind of coating on the index cards, which means it's not as absorbent as most papers or card this thin so you can do quite a bit with these i mean and if you look this i mean i back this with coffee dye paper but this is how i made these so once you've started collaging on them after you've inked them and you do it's very little you're going to be seeing any of this in the background anyway so that that was just what i meant by an index card okay now let's have a little bit of a look so as you can see the colours have muted down. Now, um, I believe it's with this sort of ink you can splatter it with water and then pull some of the colour off. I'm not going to because I've, I've sort of achieved that anyway with the white. The white, as you can see, pulls up the colour from underneath, which gives it that light mottled feel. And then we've got the black splatters and then we've got the bits of modern art. But you know what? It's fine. That's almost a butterfly. If I put a Put a beak and a couple of legs on that, it's a bird. I mean, that, if I put a, a shell on that, that could almost be a snail. Yeah, I know, I have a weird mind. So that's the watercolour hot press. This one is the mixed media paper. So again, you can see it was a little bit more muted because I did choose not to put the purple in onto that layer there. But again, a really nice background. I like the white. It gives us somewhere for the eye to rest. And this is the Manila file folder. Now, it's worth noting that both of these started out as white. The Manila card, a Manila file folder is obviously this Manila color, which lends itself quite well to this technique. Now, a couple of hints about this. Which one was this? Uh, hot press watercolor paper is expensive. Well, here in the UK, it's expensive. I would never have left the background like this. I will always stick something to the background of the finished ephemera anyway. So I didn't need the card to be this heavy, but it was interesting to see how it took the colors. I'd be happy with that, but only if I wasn't paying the price that I paid for watercolor paper. The mixed media, again, I would always put a backing on this. This is a bit softer than the watercolor paper, but again, um, for me, mixed media pads are really expensive in this country. If I find them inexpensively, I do pick them up. But if I'm going to use mixed media paper, I'd rather use it for mixed media. Although some would argue this is mixed media, but I would not use it for this technique because, again, I'd be backing this. This is what I use, guys. I use, well, there you go. There's, there's the brand. Um, I order them by the box load. I use manila file folders mainly for any blank card backings, tag backings. I use them a lot. They're inexpensive. Probably the cost of either a pad of hot press watercolour paper or a pad of mixed, pa mixed media paper, I could probably afford a box of these. If not, even adding those two together, I wouldn't have as many surfaces as I do when I use manila folder file folder. Can't say that this morning. So this is my card of choice for making the backgrounds. One of the really good considerations is, as you can see, I haven't fully covered this, yet all of the lightness within this really matches the overall design. I do not mind the whiter patches in here or here. As I said, it gives it more of a fresh color. Having white as a base will make the colors on top of it more vibrant. Whereas here, if we look, 
the purples are almost the same purples. The yellows are almost the same yellows. Well, there's another bit of yellow and another bit of yellow there. So not a lot of difference. I would say use what you have. Now I have used this technique, as I said, on coffee and tea dye paper, but after I've done one or two dips, I dry it off completely with a hairdryer, then go back in because the fibers will get too soft and wet, wet and break down. I've even done things like um, guest checks. I've done receipts this way. I've done envelopes, although with envelopes, word of warning, if you're doing this wet, wet technique, um, you know on the back of the envelope where the glue is, put a bit of washi on that because as the envelope gets wet, the glue gets wet and as it dries, it seals your envelope shut. Okay, so just put a bit of washi over the glue and then you can also remove it afterwards. Half the time I don't need it anyway, so maybe just put some scrap paper on the back of it and glue it down and trim trim the flap of the envelope just so you've covered up the glue. So hopefully you enjoyed that little technique and that little experimentation. I like this technique. I do use it a lot of times. I mean, I could even do this directly into my art journal if I wanted to give it an interesting background. You could come through and do so much more on this. You could come through and then do doodling in it. I've been watching Nicole from Relax Cut Glue and she's been doing something called a reverse, a reverse coloring book where basically you have a background that's all different colors and splatters paints and then you go in with a black marker and you pull out of the background things that um, are images to your eye so okay so let, let's use this section here as I said that could be a bird a couple of legs on there and a beak this could be a snail this this could be a mountain um, let's see what else is here oh this could almost be a dog's head like if that was the ear and I put a nose there and a mouth. And a, so you can pull things out. It's a bit like cloud watching. Another great pastime of mine. So I think that's enough. And I've actually noticed <laughs> I even managed to splatter my sign. So I've been planning to do a new one of these in the future. So I think maybe I'll take you along the gym. Maybe we'll gel print these. Because goodness knows I gel print everything or near enough everything. Maybe it's time to make a new one of those. Anyway, so hope you enjoyed that tutorial, guys. Um, for the newbies out there, hopefully that answered the questions and the comments you've been talking about. It will be easier now for me to find the newer video than trawling back through to try and find one that was a couple of years old. I will put um, Shinuki's art um, link in the comments. Um, other than that, have a great day. So I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time. Bye-bye now.